So we'll continue with selections. So selections are if then statements. So for instance, let's take our previous program with computing the area of a circle given the radius. And we, if you remember, we were asking the user to, to enter an, a radius. So we would use a scanner and the user enters an integer as the radius. However, if the user enters a negative value, we would not want the program to respond, here is the area of a, a, a circle with a negative uh, a radius. We would want our program to actually tell the user that you can't compute the area because this radius is negative. So that's exactly what we do usually in English. Basically write an if statement. If X is greater than Y, then do this print a state print if for instance the area is great if the radius is greater than zero then compute the area and print it if the radius is less than zero or else uh, print the statement you can compute the area of a circle with negative radius so first thing that i want to discuss about are the comparison operators that are available in java if you have numbers and you want to compare those two numbers, two values, you can use less than, less than equal, greater than, greater than equal, equal, and in order to distinguish it from assignment, you use double equal signs and not equal. So exclamation sign equal is not equal. Exclamation sign is actually used in Java for negation. If you want to negate a Boolean, you would use exclamation sign. So similarly, not equal is exclamation sign equal. The result of the comparison is a Boolean value. So you can assign it to a Boolean variable. It's true or false. So you can write in Java like Boolean B is equal with one greater than two, which is false. So B will actually hold the value false. So these are the comparison operators, less than, less than equal, greater than, greater than equal, equal with the two equal signs, and not equal. Now, how do you write if statements? You have a Boolean expression, like radius greater than zero, and you basically greater than equal with zero. And then you have in a block that follows the if statement, the statements that are executed if that Boolean expression was true. So for instance, if we only want to print the, the compute and print the area, if the radius is positive, we would write if open parenthesis radius greater than or equal with zero, close parenthesis, open block, then area, a variable that was defined be before the if statement is assigned the radius multiply with the radius multiply with pi. And then we have a system.outprintln as another statement that prints the area for that circle with radius, with that given radius. If you think about it as a flow chart, is basically that after you execute the statements above, uh, uh, basically before the if statement, the if statement is like a branching. You execute, you compute a Boolean expression, the value of the Boolean expression. If it's true, then you execute the statements in that if then true part of the statements. Otherwise, if the Boolean expression is false, you skip the execution of those statements and you continue in both cases with the statements that follow the if statement. Similarly, you see how the flow chart looks. If you have this code, if the area, if the radius is greater than zero, then you, on the true path, you compute the area and you print it. On the false part, you skip that and you continue with the next statements after the if statement. Now, Containment of the condition within parentheses is required in Java. So it's totally correct to put parentheses around i greater than zero. If you don't, you will get a compiler error. That's wrong in Java. Now, Java expects after you have an if statement that you have one statement after the condition. So is totally fine to take out the block if there is a single statement. If you have more than one statement, then you need to put open curly brace and close curly brace. But if you don't, you can take them out 
So this code that you have on the left-hand side is equivalent we just having if i is greater than zero and then print out the statement i is positive. So basically there is no containment necessary if you have a single statement. If you basically have a single statement, you don't need to put the curly braces. You have an implicit block there without putting the open and closed curly braces. If you have more than one statement like we had in this a uh, previous example, you have an assignment followed by a print statement, you need the block. But if you have a single statement, you don't need the block. Basically, you can directly put it as the only one statement that is executed if i is greater than zero. Any questions? Okay. Now, if you have a two-way statement, so if the Boolean condition is true, you want to execute some statements, else you want to execute some other statements. You don't want to mix them. So basically, if you don't have this else block, no matter if the Boolean statement is true or false, the next statements are executed. No, you want two branches. If the Boolean condition executes some statements, if the Boolean condition is uh, false, execute some other statements. In either case, after you do those executions, you continue with the rest of the code. So this is a two-way if statement. So if Boolean condition and close into parentheses, then statements for the two, true close, else statements for the false close, you will basically have a flow chart like the one that we have below. You have the Boolean condition, if it's true, execute statements for true close. If it's false, execute the statements for false close. In either case, continue after those statements with the rest of the code, okay? So for instance, an example is here. If the radius is positive, then we have a block for computing the area and print out the area. Else, uh, we have a statement, this is a negative input. The same rule that applied before, that one statement is uh, required after the if statement, uh, one statement is uh, required and also possible after the if statement or after the else statement is the case. So if we only have one statement, either in if or in the else, we don't need to have the containment. If we, don't, we have more than one statement, like we have in the example above, then we do have the block containment. We have the curly braces required. Okay. So this is basically if else. Any questions? Okay. So for instance, if you have a cascade of if statements, like for instance, let's say that all the scores over 90 get an A, all the scores not over 90, but greater than 80 get a B. Otherwise, all the scores greater than 70, basically between 80, not including and 70 as a C, and so on. You can write it as a cascade of if statements. So if the score is greater than 90, the grade is A. Else, meaning that it's not greater than 90, we, all, we again have an if statement. If the score is greater than 80, then the grade is B. Else, meaning that is not greater than 90, is not greater than 80. Then we have another statement. If the score is greater than 70, then we have the grade of C. Else, if the score is greater than 60, then we have the grade of D. Else, the grade is F. You can compact all of this. Remember that Java doesn't actually consider these indentations for anything. So you can actually take this and write it more concise as the code on the right hand side. You have an else and then the next if. And then you can put the else to that right under the same column. So you have else if, else, this is an else actually to this if. And this is an else to this if. And this is an else to this if, and so on. So it's just making the code more compact because in each case, we know that we are in an else branch. So when we write a new if, the else that follows is to that one if before. So the rule for matching else is to the correct if statement 
is that when you have an else, you are using, you are looking at an if statement in the same block, the first if statement as you look up. So for this else, the if statement is this one. For this else, we look up what is an if statement that doesn't have an else. Is this one. For this one is this one. And for this one is that one. That's the rule for matching the else to the previous if statement without an else. So if we want to trace this program, again, we put a breakpoint. So let's suppose that the score is 70. Let me see how we are doing with time. We still have 10 minutes, 12 minutes. So if the score is 70, we basically start the, the, the execution. So if the score is greater than 90, no, 70 is not greater than 90, we basically go to the else branch. But in the else branch, we also have an if statement. If the score is greater than 80, is also false. 70 greater than or equal with 80 is false. So we go on the else branch to that if statement. If the score is greater than or equal with 70, is true. The score is 70. The grade is assigned C, the character C. And then we skip the entire else statement for that if statement. In this case, the else statement has all of that code. So we basically skip from assigning the grade of C to after this entire if statement. X is the if statement and continues the rest of the code. So this is how you basically trace if statements. You see every condition, you follow the true or for false depending on the uh, Boolean expression. Now, if you have code that has multiple ifs but less number of else's. The rule that applies for parsing is that the else matches the most recent if in the same block. So let's take a look at this code here, which is using the wrong indentation, because maybe the programmer meant to put this else statement to this if statement. However, the rule says the else clause matches the most recent if clause in the same block. So this else statement doesn't actually match that if statement. It matches the first if, most recent if, as you look up, in the same block. So in fact, this else matches this if. So let's assume we want to run this code. Integer i is equal with 1. Integer j is equal with 2. Integer k is equal with 3. If i is greater than j, i is 1, j is 2, is false it will go and jump the entire code because this if else is actually the true part of if this condition would have been true because this else is actually linked to this if. So the code that you see on the left-hand side doesn't print anything because in fact, what it is equivalent to is this code in which this else corresponds to this if. What if we actually wanted this else to be corresponding to that if? The condition, the solution is quite simple. Put a block. Basically, use a block to say that this if statement ended. And now this else statement corresponds to that if, because that's the most recent if in the same block. So in this case, if you try to execute the code, is basically equivalent with what we had before, with the exception that we have a block around the if statement internally. So i was 1, j was 1. If i greater than j is false, because 1 is not greater than uh, 2, it goes on the else branch and it prints b. So those, that's the only difference. Basically, the condition, the way that this program is parsed is clear. The else matches the most recent if. If you want a different behavior, you have to use blocks. And then the most rec recent if in the same block disappears. This is the most recent if. I'm going to actually use a different color because this way when I save the slides, it makes probably more sense to you which that else belongs to what if. This is a different if that is inside the block has nothing to do with the else that we actually saw before, that we saw after. Any questions? Okay. 
So there are a bunch of common errors that may occur in your program. And the first common error is if you use the end of line, uh, the beginning of line style for blocks, uh, and you also put a semicolon after the condition, this program is syntactically correct. Semicolon is in fact by itself is a statement. It's the no operation statement. It says that there is a step, but nothing is executed. In fact, in your program, you can put as many semicolons as you want. They are not syntactically wrong. In fact, you can put them in a single line. Each one of these is a statement. It's called a no op statement. No op. Nothing is done. Basically, each one of these statements is nothing. Okay. Why is this important for if statements? Because you can write a condition if one is greater than two, semicolon, and then basically maybe one wanted to write some kind of uh, thing that is only done in an if statement. If one is greater than two, or if two is greater than one, then I want to execute this code, this thing here. But that's not what this program did. Basically, no matter if two is greater than one or not, basically this code in the block is executed. And the reason for that is that this semicolon actually plays the, places, plays the role of the statement that is executed when the condition is true. It's really something like this. If two is greater than one, execute semicolon and then continue with the rest of the code. So semicolon by itself is a statement. And in fact, in many programming languages, this is, if you want to have this empty space uh, and empty statements, semicolon is a statement by itself. So this is a common error that you have a condition if the radius is greater than zero, and then you have the block that basically says, I'm computing the area for a circle with that radius. However, if you, I use that semicolon here, just by mistake, you typed it by mistake, you put a semicolon after the condition because usually you put a semicolon after every statement. But actually the statement hasn't ended. So you actually have an if statement that this is the true part, the statements that are executed if the condition is true. The semicolon is here wrongly. Basically, it's not a compilation error. It's actually a bug, a logical error because it will still compute the area and print it for a negative radius. And this usually occurs when you have this new line block style. And maybe it's, it's, there, it's not that bad, it's just a logical error. It's not that bad if you have if statements. But what happens if you have a while statement? So <clears throat> I didn't talk much about while statements before, I consider that you want to iterate from zero to 10. So you write a while statement while i is less than 10, execute this code. And usually you have something here like i plus plus at the end of the while statement. So now this is fine. It basically, if you run it, it will basically uh, run up to 10 and finish. Uh, under the compilation. I think I have a compilation issue. Okay, good. So now if you run this, it's fine. It goes to the end. If you have a semicolon here, you have an infinite program, a program that runs in an infinite loop because i is still zero forever, but nothing will be incrementing for i. So you run it and you see here that actually my program is still running forever. So you actually have to explicitly kill it. So that's the biggest problem. That's a bigger problem than just, okay, a logical error, you will print the area even for negative radiuses. It's wrong because that's not what you intended. But if you have a while statement, it runs forever. And now you have a problem. How do you stop it, kill it? Now let's see another program. What's wrong with this program? You basically print out a statement, enter your total cholesterol level, then you uh, read 
from some input, let's say that this was an input, the cholesterol level as an integer, and you had a scanner for that input, and then you ask if the cholesterol is greater than 200, like in my case, unfortunately, it should say your cholesterol is too high, you need to lower that. If not, you basically says, good, you are fine, eat away. What will this problem do? It will not compile. So basically it will tell you that this L statement doesn't correspond to anything because you didn't have a block. So somebody actually said that in the chat, you need curly braces around that because only then it's correct. So now basically this is good fix for this program. How about this program? Like if the cholesterol is greater than 200, print your cholesterol is too, uh, too uh, high, uh, you need to lower that. But this is not what's happening. This is no compiler error because basically this indentation is meaningless. Basically, in either case that the cholesterol is greater than 200 or less than 200, let's say it's somebody that has cholesterol of 10, they will be told no matter what, because there is no block, you need to lower that. But of course, you don't need to lower that. It's not bad. That's actually an, uh, too good cholesterol. Okay? So that's a logical error. So that can be fixed by putting again a block again a curly braces to put the two statements into both of them to be executed only if the cholesterol is too high now there are also complex conditions which are uh, written using uh, boolean conjunction and disjunction and negation i will talk about that next class so we'll finish here for today if uh, you have any more questions, I will respond to them. I will stop the recording.